Good morning, Mike. Uh, Mike, uh, short turnaround and uh, with Ryan's injury status, is it just easiest at, at this point to uh, stick with Will for this week for Thursday night? Well, we'll see where Ryan is. We haven't uh, done anything with him here yet today, so we'll see how he is. But, uh, you know, I think we probably would say that if, if Ryan can't go, I mean, it will, we'll, we'll move forward with Will, and then we'll see, you know, where Ryan is. Again, it's, it is a short week, uh, but also we'll have to, you know, see who is available to us at, at every position. How was so, Ryan the last time you maybe saw him? How was Ryan? Yeah. No, he's good. I mean, it's supporting the quarterbacks and, you know, doing what he could do to help us win on uh, Sunday. He was obviously physically uh, was, wasn't ready and, you know, so again, we'll have to do some more stuff with him you know, today and, and evaluate where he's at. Does it help at all just in terms of Levis coming in, the performance he had, maybe not having to rush back Ryan Tannehill, yeah, though? I, I don't, you know, I don't want to look at that as you know, a determining factor of how fast players get back. We just need to get everybody back available and then make decisions at every position on who can play and who can't. And then, you know, what the game plan looks like and how we can, you know, try to, to go on the road and and try to find a way to beat Pittsburgh. So if Ryan is healthy, he's the star. If Ryan is healthy, if, if Ryan healthy, he's, he's the guy still. Is that, is that still the case even after Will's performance here with the, over the weekend? Um, you know, until Ryan's healthy, I don't think that, you know, I'm ready to, you know, make a determination. You know, I mean, I think that that's, that's uh, something that could be a possibility. But again, we're, we're talking about hypotheticals and you know, we'll get Ryan healthy and, and see where things are at then. Mike, what's the toughest thing between going from the Sunday to Thursday night games for you guys? Well, I think that's all about just the players and just making sure that they're ready physically. And, you know, today's Thursday. You know, I mean, that's how we have to approach this, that today is Thursday. And, you know, they're not going to like to hear that. But, you know, we're, we're going to have to put ourselves into the mindset today's Thursday and we play on Sunday night. So. That's how we have to approach it. But uh, physically, we, we ask a lot of the players uh, during the game. I mean, they, they play hard, and it's a, it's a violent sport. And so we'll have to just, you know, get them back as, as the best that we can. Will you stick with the tackles as you finish this game now, or, or is there an alternative? Um, well, the, the alternative, uh, when, if, if Chris is unavailable, um, you know, Jalen Duncan's on the active roster. And then we have two linemen on the practice squad. So, um, you know, we'll see. And, you know, I didn't think that, you know, I thought Dre went in there and, you know, competed and gave us a chance to win. That's different against Watt, though, right? Yeah, Watt usually, you know, Watt, Watt can line up anywhere. You know I mean? It just, you know, I, I, I don't know. There's Watt's beating a lot of tackles in this league. So whoever's over there is going to have to have some help. Like, I, I know that. Did your fellow observer, he recognized maybe that Hubbard was not right after that play? Or how, how did that kind of develop where a play got stopped and he comes out? Uh, I just kind of heard, kind of heard Chris, you know, kind of looked out there and I think he was kind of, you know, grabbing his neck. And so that's, 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 that's paramount for us to go out there. I don't know if the spotter, I didn't hear anything about a spotter. I just had heard Chris. And I don't know if he did something and, you know, we, we went out there and made sure that, uh, you know, he was he was looked after and, and that uh, then was evaluated. You're now 6-0 and uh, in your coaching tenure coming off the bye and have more than doubled the scoring of your opponents. What do you think you've been able to do so well throughout your coaching career that has led to success after the bye week? Uh, I mean, we just try to focus on getting better. I think we'd focus on, you know, improving and doing things that are going to help us win and, you know, I think for me as, a, as, as the head coach here, it's frustrating sometimes like yesterday when we're really, really close uh, to putting teams away and you're playing with good field position and you're, you know, complimenting each other and you're scoring um, and getting off the field. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, this happens and that happens and we go three and out and they convert on a third and long and then they string some plays together and, we make it a little closer than what it should be, but that's this league sometimes. So um, all the credit to the players for, for going out there and performing and, and being ready to go. How often are your quarterbacks coached to, to fall on a fumbled snap rather than try to pick it up? 
Well, I think all our players offensively or on special teams is, you know, you try to use good judgment and, and, and when you want to try to pick it up and advance it and, and when, you, when you can't. And so, and obviously you're referring to Malik's situation. I think we all would agree that we would want him to, to just recover the football. And, you know, it's one of those unfortunate situations that, you know, one mistake, um, you know, one bad snap that we could probably get away with and probably eventually reserve the right to punt being where the, the sticks would have been, that we just can't, you know, I mean, we have to, you know, sometimes fix mistakes that happen. And, and simple way of fixing that mistake would have been just just getting on the football and, you know, we'll live the fight another day. Give give the defense credit for, for holding them to a field goal and, and playing complimentary and sudden change. After reviewing Will from yesterday, what was it like best about what he did? What are some areas where you still... Well, we were good on the line of scrimmage. You know, I mean, trailing lined up wrong. Like, that's... It's not on the quarterback, um, though. Eventually, maybe you know he could he could fix that, you know, and scan and take a peek and just say, you know. But it wasn't like we were breaking the huddle with eight seconds and not being able to to shift and motion or, you know, I taking a peek and felt comfortable where we were when it was down to two and one and, you know, him getting the ball snapped and so, that was that was the first thing that I think is important is that. You know, we weren't just, you know, disjointed uh, from an operation standpoint, which is critical just to get the play started and lead to our efficiency, which we were. That confidence and comfort that he played with, was there a point like in the week of preparation up into the game where you felt like you know, he's really getting it? Well, I mean, they all have a good week and they build up. And, you know, some of the plays that you've worked on or that you work on throughout the week that you, that you hit, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think like the throwback. I don't know if he hit, maybe he hit Nick on it. You know, I know we had run it. Um, but, you know, sometimes guys make decisions just to not open up. I mean, Nick, I think, hit 21 and a half miles an hour going for that ball. So I don't know if he got to that speed in, in practice, but, you know, you, you talk about the, you know, the ability to hit some shots down the field. So, and that was that was probably the best thing, and and we we practiced them and and thought that they would be there. I think you touched on it a little bit there about the line of scrimmage. How much was your ability to stay on schedule in the run game a creator of everything that happened? Yeah, I mean the number one key on offense was going to be that efficiency was going to rule the day. And you know it's funny we talk about pushing piles, and I mean there was like a three or four yard run, and and hop comes in and, and, and he's pushing with his back and I'm thinking, man, that ain't really doing much, but I love your effort, Hop, and you got the message that, you know, we knew that every yard was going to be critical to stay in, in third and short and not live in, in third and long where they had been really excelling. You know, third and six plus, they were um, they were doing really well in that regard, uh, leading, you know, coming into our game. So I think that everybody on offense embraced that and that we were able to to run the football, we're able to take a profit. You know, I think the one, you know, having, I'm sure we'll like to have it back, the one to trailing, you know, the two guys on them, it was a good ball, but I think that there was guys, two of them, and, and probably just try to take the profit there to to chig uh, on some of those play passes when we say take a shot, you know, just being smart. Because we were hitting those long passes that consistently and that accurately and in practice for a while? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think that that's something that he does well. That's a strength of his is um, he's got good arm strength. And, you know, again, to do those, you need protection. And to, to run a double move on, uh, in empty, you know, like we did the other day, you need protection. And, and we got it uh, and, and held up in protection. We were able to, to throw it. Specific to him and his size, skill set? Uh, I think uh, probably both, Joe. I think both. He, he uh, had done well. Those are some things that he, you know, had put on tape in Kentucky. He is a strong player. Um, but I think also the look as well as just looking at um, maybe how they were uh, approaching, you know, short yardage. And, uh, you know, knowing that that'll be different each and every week. But, you know, felt like that was something that we could do uh, yesterday.
defensively. They said that they weren't surprised by what Levis was able to go out there and do because he had done that in, in practice a, a lot. Uh, in other situations, like with other teams, that has been the case. And players went to the coach and said, hey, you know, so-and-so is really balling. Did, did that happen with you and, and any of the guys? No, our defensive place? guys need to focus on, on stopping uh, the, the other team's offense. Let the offensive coaches and me uh, handle the offense. How about, how about within the coaching staff? Was, was that, you know, something that came up? Defensive like, coaches? Yes. Yeah, no, they need to focus on stopping uh, Pittsburgh and, and all those good things. No, I mean, it's just we, we're trying to create an atmosphere of, of a team. And, and uh, you know, any place where coaches can help, any places where players can help, and I appreciate your question, and I was kind of, you know, joking a little bit, but, you know, anywhere where we can try to help somebody else on our team, we want to try to do. Whether that's Charles London uh, sitting with our defensive players and saying, hey, this is this player's skill set, or um, using another example of somebody else saying, hey, I was with this player, I was with this coach, um, or this technique. Like we, I encourage that, we want that uh, to try to help uh, the entire football team wherever we can, whether that's Tom Quinn helping a gunner, even though technically Anthony Levine helps the gunners or is working with the gunners. Like we don't, it's not like my guy, there are guys, it's everybody. Like we're all included in, in trying to help the player have some confidence, have some trust to go out there and, and do his job, everybody. So nobody came to me and said, oh yeah, we, Will does this. I, we, I'm watching practice too, you know what I mean? But we're just trying to create an atmosphere that everybody is is helping each other uh, and, and trying to get us to, to, to win. What's your feeling on fans' rights to boo? Well, one, we have great fans. One, one, one they, you know, I was a little curious, you know, and, and coming off the bye and maybe the uniforms helped and the alumni helped. But, you know, I know when we play hard and we play physical and we – we look like we know what we're doing and it's not sloppy. I mean, we're not, nobody is going to win every game in this league. You guys have all covered this league. This is a, it's a tough league to win in. We know that. But when we've played up to a certain level of standard that looks like it's football, right? And not disjointed and not, you know, just bad football, right? Lack of a better term. That our fans are there, they're cheering, they're loud on third down, they've helped us win, they've helped us with goal line stands, they've helped us on and on. So with that being said, you know, if there's things that they don't like, like they, you know, they've got a right. Like we all are disappointed in, you know, when we don't do something well or the decisions that we make. So, you know, I know that they're gonna be there, they're gonna support us uh, as long as we you know, are playing the way that we're supposed to play. We had a lot of players yesterday kind of instructing them on not to boo. What, well, I, you, what I, do you think about that? I, I, what I think about that is exactly what I just said. You know what I mean? Our, our job is to play. Our job is to coach. And, again, it also is to support our teammates, right? That That's also um, a player's job is to support their teammates. So, I appreciate them supporting their teammate, picking them up off the ground, helping them however they can. Do you suspect that after that, did you say anything to Malik after the boost came in, or how do you think he handled that whole situation? No, I mean, the same thing I tell Malik or tell anybody that's not in the game, be ready to go. Be, be ready to go. And if you're, if you're not, you just never know when you're going to get an opportunity. And, um, you know, whether it's Dre Dillard or whether it's Eric Garrar, uh, in any position. Like as soon as you start thinking about something other than what my potential job could be if I get called on right now, uh, that's taken away from from your ability to take advantage of an opportunity. Did you suspect that maybe the venom maybe wasn't directed at him as much as maybe the decision to to change quarterbacks at the point? All right. Again, if it was directed at me, great, I'll take it. You know, what I mean, if it, that's what it was, Jimmy, we could t you can put a poll out and uh, and let me know how it goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more than okay with the plan that we had. I'm disappointed that we, we snapped the ball um, high and outside to the quarterback and that we didn't recover it. Um, still, I'm going to be okay with, with that plan because uh, I know what's in there, uh, know what, the, what we can do. But, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm okay either way. 
said last week, you know, there was a time for, for Kyle after which, you know, his practice showings that wouldn't pay off if his game showings didn't didn't match up. Are, are you near a point like that with Malik, his situational play has resulted in the ball on the ground quite a bit or failure to recover it? Yeah, I mean, Malik's, you know, Still trying to, to, you know, he's made some plays that have helped us, you know, when he had an opportunity. Um, but, but no, I'm not, I mean, I, um, you know, a young quarterback that's, you know, that's nah, never even crossed my mind. You know, has Harold looked different to you the last couple of weeks, Landry? Uh, I mean, every week is different, but he certainly had a, you know, factor yesterday and, and, and affected a quarterback and, you know, unfortunately had the, had the roughing um, there, but you know, listen, he was he was rushing hard, and I don't think that was a, you know, it wasn't something that he hit him low or you know, it was full body weight. You know, he was kind of being blocked and and reaching and and caught the quarterback in, in the neck. I so there's there's different penalties that I can kind of break down. I don't think that was one that would be, you know, necessarily avoidable, but I uh, wish we you know wouldn't have gotten the penalty and would have had the sack it would have been a big play for us but you know it was good to see Harold you know and again using that crowd the crowd noise that was there when uh when when we need him I think that you force him to go silent and Harold's really good at that that get off uh, so you know he was able to get the edge on uh, McGarry um, so again that's uh you know some of those things are attributed to, to our fans and their excitement and their ability to, to help us. When teams can go silent and we can use the rules to our advantage, you know, with the center head bob, and if it's sudden and abrupt, you know, Harold's smart enough to go because he knows if the ball doesn't come after a sudden head bob that it's supposed to be put on the center. And so if we can get that crowd noise and force teams to, to go in a silent, then they got to be really good with the silent cadence just because of when you look around the league and the trends that those centers that snap their head up and the ball doesn't come, there's a defensive guy that jumps, they've been putting them on the center, rightfully so. We, everybody's sharing the same video and that's been the message. So my point is, is if we can, you know, a smart player like Harold can put all that together, we get crowd noise, we force them into situations that, hey, have to go silent. Harold knows, okay, that's sudden. The ball's got to be coming. I can get a good jump, and I may get a half a step to affect the quarterback. You've been able to win here at home at Nissan Stadium, going on the road again to another great environment on Thursday night, Coach. Anything you can take from just these road games and maybe what you haven't done that you can Well, it's what we have done. We've turned the football over. You know, we've done things that have hurt us. Uh, it's a road environment, and we're not going to be able to blast sticks, renegade any louder. Like, I promise you. Like we won't, but what we're going to have to just be that much more focused on the huddle, on breaking the huddle, on where to line up. Uh, because when you have a, a thin margin for error like there is in this league and like, you know, maybe we're at, you know, right now, that those yards matter. Those yards in the red zone matter. When I would talk about penalties or non-efficient runs, those, those matter. Every yard when you get down there, especially in the red zone matters. And they know that in those critical situations, that crowd's going to get louder and third and four turns into third and nine. And then it's, you know, a lot tougher. So again, that'll be a huge key for us is to be able to handle uh, the road environment. Uh, you know, but, but I do, you know, that was an important win for us to, to be able to win uh, and not really be at our best, be at our best at moments. But, but not for the entire game, which we we have to find a way to get to. You yeah, answered a confusing explanation you got about the D-Hop P.I. Uh -huh. It was confusing to us. Is there any any way we could try that again, or is it too complicated? I, I, all I said, all I asked was, what did you have the O.P.I. on? On the guy traveling or the guy on top of him? And he said the guy that was covering him. He had D-Hop with his hands up appeared to be driving so that's what i went with and you know i don't i don't have the time right now to go get an explanation i'm folk you look, after you looked at it uh, probably but again it i think that's a case of uh 
they had been playing that way the entire game. And again, it was just they let them play, uh, and and we have to be we have to do business as business is being done. And I told our receivers that I told our defensive guys that that if that's how they're going to call it, that's how we have to play it, and I trust that they're going to to continue to do it that way. I think it was just a bad situation of the guy running, you know, had trailing in the backfield. Uh, the guy was on the other side. He kind of caught off guard. He was running late. Um, so uh, again, we're, whatever the officiating is, you know, we 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 there's some things that we know, and there's some things that that just happen. I would say that that one's one that just happened. You know, holding a guy on a punt return, blocking a gunner, you know, four yards out of bounds, twenty five yards downfield, like that's that's a dumb penalty. There's other penalties where, like, okay, they happen. It's in the course of a game. Like, you tug a guy, legal contact, whatever it may be. But there's some things that we that we got to stop making excuses for and coming over to the sideline and saying, well, I I stop co- – we're, we're not coaching that stuff anymore. Like, we're going to coach the stuff that is new, not the stuff that we've been talking about for f- six years. Going uh, Gibson – Gibson over uh, Weaver and Murphy, maybe a reward for what he's doing in practices or maybe a sign that uh, others need you to You know, we only got so many guys that get active and, you know, try to have around nine edge guys up there, had some new safeties, some special teams play a part in that. Um, you know, Travis had been factoring in the opportunities that he had and tried to give him another opportunity that could change this week. You know, we've, you know, plays hard and we've tried to be, be uh, involved in special teams as well. Um, which he hadn't been. So, I, you know, I give Weave credit for that, uh, for finding, you know, some role. And every week is different. And, again, we can't, can't have everybody active. Um, but Thursday night, you know, could, could be different. Uh, we'll see. Is there a chance to get Josh Wiley back this week? Just there is. Shorter? Yes. Okay. Yes, there is. Be a practice, just one practice? Or it, two it's two? Cheddar Bob, Kayla. It's <laughs> Cheddar Bob. But, uh yeah, no. You know, he was starting to do some good things, a versatile, uh, versatile piece on offense and also, um, you know, special teams. It's something that he hadn't really done much. But, you know, he, one game he played like two or three different positions on the punt team. You know, Raider showed up again. So these tight ends that, you know, maybe you don't think that they're going to factor, that that's really cool to see. You know, Kevin did that last year when he when he came up for us, and I mean there he is down there making a really nice tackle on on the punt team, and so yeah, hopefully we'll get Josh back. That's a love tap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can't hit me harder than that, how are you going to hit the offensive lineman? Um, no, I just. You know, I, I, I just try to coach a team, man. I try to make a connection with these guys. I try to be honest with them. I try to tell them the truth. Uh, I try not to waste their time. Uh, and so we, you know, we need Tier, And Tier also has an individual situation. And there's no secret that Tier's contract's up after this year. And, you know, I've, I've told him that, you know, for you and your family, like, both things can happen. Like, you can play well and you can help the team. And you can play well and and help your family. Like that's that's what professional sports is, um, and, and I understand it. After, Go ahead, Corey. Thank you. After the performance of Will, Kayla, just barking everything out in front of you. Just, you know, she's not with us anymore. She's just stomping all over me. I steal so, their stuff for free. What are you talking about? Good. <laughs> well, after Will's performance that. yesterday, though, do you expect to field calls about Ryan headed into the trade deadline? I don't know. I mean, we we haven't as of yet, um, but. I have no idea. I'll go downstairs, and when Rand tells me that somebody called, then we'll talk about whoever player they, they called about and what they would offer and make a decision, Does just it like we do. Though? Does it change the situation that we would listen or that we would – I mean, we would. I think we owe it to the team to, to listen as diligently as possible on anybody that would call. Um, you know, re- regardless of player or person – or, or position, just to, to make sure that we're we're doing right by the football team. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. you. Johnny was really worried.